Hi there, welcome back to the Cosmic Classroom. We'll now talk about the evidence for dark matter that comes from clusters of galaxies. Remember, clusters of galaxies contain lots of galaxies, sometimes thousands of galaxies, each one very similar to our own Milky Way. So there are three ways of measuring the mass inside clusters of galaxies, at least. Uh, one way is to measure the, oops, measure the velocities of galaxies inside a cluster of galaxies. So these are galaxies in the, in the center of a cluster of galaxies, and they are interacting gravitationally with one another. They are not standing still, they are moving. We can't see them moving because they are so far away that it takes a long time for them to move around. There's big distances, but they are moving very fast. So we can measure this velocity, we can measure how fast the galaxies are moving. And how fast they are moving is directly related to the amount of mass that it's inside the cluster. Because after all, gravity is the most important thing in astronomy. I think I mentioned that many times. And if there is more mass, there is more gravity. The galaxies are then being accelerated more. Therefore, they speed more. They move faster. More mass means the galaxies will be moving faster. So how fast they move is a measurement of how much mass is in there, right? Total mass, any mass that's attracting uh, each other gravitationally. So that could be mass in galaxies, mass in gas, mass in dark matter. So we measure the velocities of galaxies in a cluster, and we find that there is about 50 times more mass in a cluster of galaxies than our, eye can, than our eyes can see. So we can estimate the amount of mass that comes from the stars within each one of those galaxies. We can estimate the amount of mass that comes from the gas between the stars and the gas between the galaxies. We sum that all up and we compare with how fast the galaxies are moving. They are moving way too fast for it to be understood as an acceleration caused by just the mass that you see. So apparently there's 50 times more mass there than we can see. Now we'll zoom out in this cluster and look at a much bigger scale. Okay? So we're zooming out, the cluster is bigger. And when we zoom out, we'll see the whole extent of the gas in that cluster. So these are the galaxies, and now I'm superimposing the gas. The gas can be made, can be measured in x-rays. It's a hot gas, so it can be measured in x-ray. The gas is mostly the, the, the main constituent of the universe, mostly hydrogen, right? And again, we can measure the temperature of this gas. If the gas is hot, heavily ionized, if it's hot, it's because things are moving there too fast. Right? High kin a lot of kinetic energy means high temperature. So if the, hot, the, the gas is hot, there is a lot of mass accelerating it. And we see that the gas is really hot. And that gives us an idea that there is about 85% of dark matter in this cluster, about 13% of hot gas, and 2% of stars. So the stars that you can see with your eye are just 2% of the mass that's there, followed by hot gas, which has about five times more, and most of the mass we really can't see. We don't, it's not from stars, it's not from gas. There's an, so we measure using velocity of galaxies, we measure using temperature of the hot gas, and we can also measure the mass of a cluster using the gravitational lensing, as I mentioned in a video before. So remember that gravitational lensing is the bending of light rays by gravity, and that can also tell us the mass. So we compute the mass using gravitational lensing, and again, we come, we come to the conclusion that there is 50 times more mass in the cluster than our eyes can see. And recently, there was a, a cluster that was observed that brings together all this information, the information from the gas, the information from the galaxies, the information from gravitational lensing, and help us have a picture of what's really going on inside the cluster. So this cluster, was uh, nicknamed the bullet cluster. So this is a picture of the bullet cluster. And just to give you an idea of how big this 
thing is, we are zooming in to a couple of galaxies there. Again, each one of those galaxies is the size of our own Milky Way. You see very few stars in the image. This is a star. Uh, that's a star. And that's about it. Everything else is a galaxy. So we can do, a, we can do s d different things with that cluster. For example, we can observe the gas in the cluster. We observe an X-ray and we see the gas in the cluster. And what we see is this red distribution that has been superimposed to the galaxies. You see that there is a cone shaped of a higher brightness, more gas, hotter gas here and here, right? So this is from the X-ray, mapping the distribution of gas. We can use gravitational lensing to map the distribution of total mass. And this is the distribution of total mass as measured by gravitational lensing. Okay, so blue is the distribution of mass in the cluster. I'll now superimpose everything. So now we have gas, mass, and the galaxies in there. I hope you can notice that the distribution of matter is not following the distribution of gas, right? The distribution is ga of gas is more concentrated in the middle of this, to this distribution, and the, con and the mass is more evenly, dis evenly distributed all across the cluster. So if you look at the picture once again, keep in mind that the gas seems to be here in the middle, while the distribution of mass seems to be all around, right? It's one blob of mass here and another big blob of mass there. So what is it that this is telling us? Why is it that the gas is not matching the distribution of mass? After all, if mass, if gas is the main constituent of mass in a cluster, the, the two should match. So the idea is that these were originally two clusters, as you can see here. One smaller cluster and another big cluster. And you see that the blue and the red distributions, the gas and the dark matter, the total matter, are right on top of each other. Those two clusters are traveling together and they, col they collide. They collide and they go through one another. Now, the gas interacts strongly with the other gas that's there. The gas of the two clusters interact, and the gas starts lagging behind while the dark matter moves without being, being uh, slowed down. Just like the galaxies. The galaxies follow the distribution of the dark matter because they are tiny, and in, in this big scale they are tiny, so they don't really collide with each other. They just go through. So we say that the galaxies and the, ga and the dark matter are collisionless. They don't collide. They keep going in their motion while the gas heats up because it collides with all of the other gas that's there. This, it, this uh, shows us that there really is evidence that there is a lot of mass out there that we can't see. If we could explain everything with gas, in galaxies, the distribution of dark matter should exactly match the distribution of the gas. And you probably go back and look at this again because the bullet cluster is quite complex and brings lots of things together. But I hope it helps your understanding of the evidence for dark matter from clusters of galaxies. I'll see you next time.